Hi, I'm Dave Vanderstrike. Let's get to the chase. The EMC, evil megacorporation sector, is more competitive than ever. Sure, it used to be all about doing evil and the bottom line, but the marketplace has become oversaturated. Even regular megacorporations are committing unspeakable acts every day. Doing evil is just no longer enough. How are you gonna stand out from the crowd and grab attention? This is where branding makes all the difference. Brand is all about predetermined preference. And when your clients and customers think of an omnipresent, malevolent force, will you be the first to come to mind or will they be going to your competition? Let's talk about how branding can give your mega corporation the edge in today's marketplace of evil. Evil is not a substitute for personality. Who you are is not what you do. I don't care if you're a shadowy cabal trying to rig the fossil fuel industry or a twisted tech startup running a factory slaughtering people for their bones. What do you want people to feel when they think of your brand? When enthralled by your brand story, people won't care about inconvenient facts. When Chapel releases their newest magical product, nobody thinks about the kids mining cobalt or the tons of e-waste generated when they make biphones unrepairable by design. The true magic is erasing those facts and replacing them with feelings. When I buy from Chapel, I feel cool and innovative, like my consumerism somehow makes me superior to others. Their brand is so good, people don't even care that they're evil. But sure, that's Chapel. They're so much more than mega. But what about you? When people are being snatched off the street and taken to the bone factory, do you want them pissing themselves in terror or pissing themselves in excitement? It's not kidnapping. It's surprise selection for an exclusive membership. That's brand mystique. Or aim even higher. What if your factory became so exclusive and so desirable that people would willingly line up for days to get in? If Supreme can do it by selling bricks with Futura stamped on them, anything is possible. Plus, imagine the savings for shareholders. When you recycle your kidnapping squad into protein bars, you can sell at a criminally high markup. That's just one direction you could lean in. The important thing is to make people feel something passionately about your brand. It's hard to feel passionate about a blank slate. Today's clients and consumers don't have time for the faceless mega corporations of the past. It's time to get to know who you really are. LexCorp, Omnicorp, E-Corp. I could go on, but I'm not here to cure your insomnia. Likewise for industries and technologies. These names sound clumsy coming out of a real person. You want a monopoly over the global military industrial complex and the infant formula industry? You need to become part of the conversation. And that starts with a name worth saying. Say you want to turn the poor into designer protein powder for influencers. Fantastic. Let's choose a name that evokes your firm's positive environmental impact. Lightfoot, Nimbus, Fleet with three E's, anything but another Megacon Industrial Technologies. Most EMCs choose a name that's a big flashing sign that says we are evil and massive in the most tedious way possible. Some of you literally put that name in a big flashing sign. If you want to be the brand of choice in evil, you need a name people can trust. Whether they should trust you or not is a completely different question. There's a reason it's called Maviant and not the Crippling Student Debt Corporation. And on the topic of words, please do me a favor and don't pick a transparently ominous slogan. All too many times I see evil brands nailing it on the tone of the name, then stumbling at the finish line with a transparently evil tagline. People aren't idiots. It's like an underage teen trying to buy liquor with a perfect fake ID with the name Seymour Butts. Yes, the shareholders will think it looks very clever on their business card, but they won't be happy with what it does to your bottom line. Look, in this sector, I've yet to find an EMC that doesn't love a slick uniform. There's something about fashion and fascistic corporate overlords that just go hand in glove. And I'm not here to tell you not to spend the money on four seasonal outfits for your private militia, but just like you wouldn't send your elite corporate henchmen into Hero Inc. HQ in flip-flops and khakis, your brand image needs to look the part. Make no mistake, in the war of evil, the battle for mindshare is just as real as the battle against the forces of good. Let's talk about your logo. Is it an octagon, pentagon, triangle or some other pointy and oppressive geometric shape, it's time for a brand refresh. You want people to trust you implicitly and unwittingly? Use flowing, organic lines to give off a reassuring, comforting vibe. 
or don't use a symbol at all. The job of the symbol is to represent the heart of your company, and your black and shriveled heart isn't one worth showing the public. So save the cash and lean on your typography. Speaking of which, yours is a disaster. I see only two kinds of typography in this sector. One, bland corporate sans serif, center aligned in all caps, and two, in the tech sector, you're a steel or bank gothic center aligned in all caps. Your font choice is a chance to tell me your brand story. Are you elite, untouchable, the new Mount Olympus? Show me your Bodoni light. You want me to pay $29,000 to install your microchip in my brain? Lose the 80s cliches and swap in A-type display. You want people to add your organic, handcrafted asbestos to their Pinterest board? Get acquainted with Recoletta. Your corporate villainy should not extend so far as to ignore the existence of serif fonts. I've left the worst for last. Don't be that cliched evil corporation that misses the importance of color. There are other options than cool gray and gunmetal, or worse yet, white, black, and red. Who at corporate signed off on this? Were they high on bath salts? Start a mood board. Find your color. Soft blue, hot pink, saffron yellow. Pick any of these and truly commit to it, and you'll leave your competition in the dust, because that's where dinosaurs belong. Know your brand story. Make people feel something. Give your brand of evil a name and face they can remember. Because without that, you're just another faceless corporation committing crimes against humanity. And that's just not news anymore. When Glomnicorp came to me, they were just another EMC out of Detroit. They dabble in a bit of everything, privatizing public services, robotics, weapons manufacturing, yada yada. There was nothing to connect with the consumers who interact with them every day. Here's what we came up with for them after my evil brand workshop. Enjoy. In these times, more than ever before, life can be unpredictable. It's the little things that add up to big worries. It's why we're disposing of life's little annoyances. Bank fees, limited bandwidth, Miranda writes, armed insurrection. Let's leave yesterday's worries in the past so that you can focus on what really matters, worry-free. Umi. Enabling Tomorrow. Amy is a wholly owned subsidiary of Glomny Consumer Products, part of the Glomny Corp family. So that was something a little bit different. I've been thinking about this concept for a few years now, and it seemed like a fun change of pace. So let me know if you enjoyed it. Remember, the brand names are fake, but the principles are real. Usually on this channel, I break down design and typography in a more grounded way. So if that's something you're into, stay tuned. Huge thank you, of course, to my patrons on Patreon for helping me keep this channel going. It really means a lot. My name is Linus. I will not apologize for that accent work, and I'll see you hopefully in another video.